the truth about communication in relationships, is it always a good thing? And the reason I want to spend some time on this is because traditionally when it comes to like work in relationships and um, especially, you know, romantic relationships, but this can also be with friends, this can be with family, this can be with people you work with, colleagues, managers, clients, whatever. It's across the board relationships. We're told that more communication is better. If things are broken, you just need to communicate more. You just need to, to talk more and, and communicate more. But what I want to really look at today is the truth about communication in relationships and seeing if it really is a good thing. To me, it's not so much about just communicating more. It's about understanding communication as a whole and where you're communicating from. So in order for us to look at that, the first thing that we need to look at is understanding what happens in communication, understanding how your feelings are created, understanding how your experience is created. I believe the experience of life is created from the inside out. So you have a thought about something, you have a feeling that comes associated with that thought based on the stories that you have, and you then experience a felt experience of the thought and the feeling combined. So they're kind of like one thing, thought, feeling, experience of to give you an example like if if i'm looking at a to-do list and i have a thought of like oh my god i have so much stuff to do i'm now going to feel stressed overwhelmed maybe a bit a bit frustrated and, and the experience that i'm going to have is stress overwhelm frustration so our feelings are always arising in us based on the thinking that we're having they can't they come hand in hand they can't not and more often than not to take it one level deeper based on the energy that's moving through us we will create a subjective story via our thinking a subjective story about what that energy means so if the energy we're experiencing is low we might be like oh i'm in a bit of a funk you know I, I, i'm a bit i'm a bit you know my, my head's a bit fuzzy um i i, I can't get out of it i'm feeling lazy etc etc now you could also see that low energy state as calm and peaceful. Same with, with if you were having high energy, right? You could be going into say a uh, interview at work or you could be going on a first date. That that energy, that, that, that high energy, you could feel as like nervousness, you know, anticipation, you know, wanting to be your best. Or you could see it as excitement, you know? exhilaration oh, i'm so happy you know to be on going on this first day i'm so happy to have this opportunity for the job interview it can be interpreted in different ways and the way in which we interpret the energy that's moving through us based on the thinking that we're having and the feeling that comes with that is what creates our experience so knowing that let's take a look at how, how does this buy into about the truth about communication and relationships and whether it's a good thing or not the way that it buys into it is the, the, the feeling that we're having, or you could call it the place that we're coming from, the experience that we're having in that moment is going to play in a very important role in the way in which we communicate. So let me put it to you like this. Communication is like a pipe, right? It's like a pipe. If you've got a pipe in your house, which all of us do, the way that a pipe works is that what you put in the top of the pipe comes out the end of the pipe. So if I put dirty water into the top of the pipe, what's going to come out is dirty water. If I put clean water in the top of the pipe, what's going to come out is clean water. So if we see communication as like a pipe, what do you think it is that goes in the top of it? It's our feeling. It's our felt experience in the moment. It's the place that we're coming from in that moment. Now, if I'm coming from negative feelings, if I'm coming from frustration or um, stress or um, a, a sense of lack, what's gonna come out via my communication is frustration, stress, and, and a sense of lack. Now, if I'm coming from a positive place and we put loving and compassionate and um, calm and open into the top of the pipe, what comes out via our communication is all of those things. 
calm, compassionate, open, loving, etc. Why is this important when it comes to communication in a relationship? Because it's not what we're communicating, it's how we're communicating, the place that we are communicating from. Because ultimately, that is more important than the actual communication itself. I could say, for example, uh, to my girlfriend, can you please make sure you wash up the dishes when you're finished in the kitchen? Now, if I'm coming from the feeling state, let's, let's put stress, let's put frustration into the pipe and out the other side comes frustrated communication. It's going to be more like, babe, when you do the, the dish, like when you finish in the kitchen, can you please just wash up the dishes? The point is, Deacon, that you have not done the dishes for five years. Now, my girlfriend isn't going to hear the words. She is on some level. What she's really going to hear is where I'm coming from. She's going to hear the frustration. That's what she's picking up on. She's picking up on the frustration. So she's going to then respond to, to my frustration. She's not going to respond to, can you please put the dishes away she's, or, or wash up or whatever it is. She's going to speak to the frustration. So she's probably going to respond with frustration. Now, if we put a uh, loving and compassionate into the top of the pipe and we same scenario, I'm like, Babe, I know you've been busy today, but you know, when you when you're finishing the kitchen, can you please just try and keep it a little bit clean? It, you know, it would it would be massively appreciated. The words are very similar. There's a slight difference, yes, but very similar. It's the same. I'm asking the same thing. It's the same request. And what she's hearing is the loving and compassion that's coming. The love and compassion that's coming through. And then she's going to respond to that. Oh, do you know what? I'm so sorry, I was really busy, you know, had loads of things going on and do you know, I just totally forgot. I, next time I'll make sure I do. So communication, yes, it's important. But is it always important to communicate? Is, if we keep communicating, is that the most important thing? Because if our communication is constantly coming from frustration or stress or, you know, overwhelm or whatever that goes into the top of the pipe, if we're just communicating from that place out of the bottom of the pipe, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out there and say more communication is probably not a good thing. <laughs> it's probably going to cause more problem in your relationships than, than less. It's going to do a lot more damage than it is going to do good. Now, if we're communicating from that loving open place in the top of the communication pipe and what's coming out the other side is loving communication, the chances are the words that we're speaking are going to be more impactful because they're going to be received differently. And this is why, you know, the truth about communication in relationships is it's not always a good thing. What's more important is to get into that positive feeling for yourself and with your partner to then communicate. Because I'm pretty sure everyone here can relate to this. It can be, like I said, partner, friend, family member, colleague, boss, whatever. If you're both communicating from the negative feelings, we all know how those conversations go, right? I don't need to put more detail on that. We, we all know how those conversations go. And if we look at it from, from the other side, when you've had a conversation with someone and you're coming from that place of understanding, of love, of compassion, you can probably talk about the same things and the conversation goes very differently. So what's most important when it comes to communication in all relationships isn't communicating more. It isn't say more, it isn't communicate more. It's where are you communicating from? How are you communicating? What's the place that you're coming from with your communication? Because that's really what's heard on a deeper level, that's what's heard. The feeling state that you're in is what's heard. So to me, if you focus more on getting into that positive feeling together, you can communicate almost anything to each other. And it's never going to be received in a way where it's an attack or it's offensive. It's just going to be received with love because that love pierces through everything else. It pierces through all of the other stuff and speaks directly to the love in someone else. It speaks directly to the compassion in someone else. It speaks directly to the understanding in someone else. And that's what's most impactful. So if you want to see a massive shift in your relationships, what I would suggest is to focus on communicating when you're in that positive place because i've seen a massive change in my relationships i've seen a change in my work relationships i've seen a change in, in in the relationship i have with my girlfriend the more aware i become of how am i communicating where am i communicating from 
am I communicating from a positive place? Am I communicating from these positive feelings or am I communicating from the negative feelings of stress or frustration or whatever? Same with my parents, same across the board, friends, everything. So if you really want to improve your, 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 your relationships, focus on where am I coming from with my communication right now and getting into that positive feeling to then communicate. And it will be way more impactful and way more efficient. I want to hear from you. Like, what are you hearing in this episode for you? What's your one big takeaway from this episode? You know, I, I record these because I want to open a conversation with you. So please hit me up on Instagram. At I am Alex Manzi. Drop me a DM. I'd love to hear what's the one key takeaway that you're getting from this episode. And I would love to offer you some time to have a further conversation around that if you're willing to do so. And if you like what you've been hearing in this episode, if you want some more, be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll look forward to seeing you for the next one.